Hello, I'm Matthew Sargison. One thing I've always found fascinating about the quantitative investment business is how distinctly different two of the largest groups within it, namely CTAs and traditional quant equity businesses, approach portfolio construction for their different signals. On the one hand, traditional quant equity strategies often aim to be market neutral, that is, to neutralize exposure to the broad equity market by trading only cross-sectional variations in returns. This means holding simultaneous long and short positions that offset, where the longs are chosen to have higher relative value and so are expected to gain more than the shorts will lose in a rising market or lose less in a falling market. CTAs, on the other hand, have always taken a much more directional approach to trading, happy to build up large positive betas to markets through outright long positions where models indicate markets will rise, and trading these into equally large short positions where models expect them to fall. This way, through time and over a number of years, CTAs typically average out to have no overall beta exposure, but at any particular instance, this may not be the case. The difference in approach can be seen in academia too, where papers are frequently written exploring one or other factor's ability to explain the cross-section of equity market returns, or they're written to look in time series properties of perhaps the same factor, but in multiple asset classes. But papers rarely examine both approaches at the same time. And what's fascinating to me is that these two approaches, cross-sectional relative value or time series momentum, have both been historically successful at delivering alpha over a long term. But they seem to have evolved as almost ideological differences. Quants with a background in equity market neutral research will often naturally take the same approach to trading other asset classes. For instance, building cross-sectional models of commodity behavior, when it may not be obvious what the common market factor actually is. If we move away from ideology, we can see that there are potential merits in both. Both have been successful in different conditions over a long period. But we can also think a bit more deeply about what drives one trading style to suit being traded in a cross-sectional manner more than a directional one, and vice versa. All quantitative strategies rely on signals that have some forecastability over the direction of prices of assets in the portfolio. And unless the portfolio only contains truly uncorrelated assets, the assets returns in the portfolio can be thought of as being driven by a series of common factors, as well as some idiosyncratic market noise. When a signal is traded directionally in time series, the biggest exposure will inevitably be to the signal's prediction on the largest common factor. And when traded in cross-section, it will be that largest factor that is most neutralized, with most exposure coming from positions in the smaller factors. Value signals tend to be good at predicting relative behavior in these smaller factors within the large number of highly correlated stocks, whilst less good at predicting the immediate direction of the broader market index. And so indeed, they appear to be very suited for cross-sectional relative value trading. Similarly, long-term momentum tends to be better at predicting the behavior of the strongest first component of market behavior within each asset class and has been well suited to trading the direction that the market overall is going. In his latest annual report to alumni on the state of the $38 billion Harvard Endowment Fund, Stephen Blythe, the management company CEO behind the world's biggest university endowment fund, expressed concerns that he felt current markets with continuing high valuations were becoming frothy. He further stated that they had now, and I quote, renewed focus on identifying managers with demonstrable investment expertise on both the long and short sides of the market. Or when such a significant investment manager makes this kind of insight, it makes sense to take notice. Being able to time directional investments on the short side of markets and protect the rest of a portfolio by adding value in stock markets or commodity prices or the US dollar are falling is what differentiates time series from cross-sectional trading. Indeed, over the last 18 years, based on data available from Barclay Hedge, while the average net annual return from managed future CTAs has been almost identical to that of equity market neutral strategies, 
at nearly 6%. The returns during periods of crisis have been very different. On the 10 occasions over the period that the S&P 500 has fallen for two consecutive months and by more than 10%, then the average CTA return was still relatively high, at 5.1% annualised. The market neutral strategies annualised returns, however, dropped to less than 1%. The choice between time series or cross-sectional may indeed be an ideological one, but the distinction is important. Cross-sectional models typically seek to hedge out market risk, and for them, a good result would be to contain the profit and loss impact of significant price moves. By contrast, strategies that can trade the market directionally actively seek to profit from such large price moves. And from a portfolio diversification perspective, this feature is particularly interesting during periods of market stress, when prices can move very quickly. In the context of a truly diversified portfolio, we believe neutralizing all underlying market exposures is seldom the optimal approach, even during periods of extreme stress and acute risk aversion. Thank you for watching. Thank you.